So I disconnected this compression fitting from this line where it was connected on a Gould's pump. This one actually says A.O. Smith up there, but Gould's down there. And this is a three and three eighths inch uh, compression nut. This is so I can relocate the line further down. This is a 3 8 inch uh, FIP connector onto the Gold's pump. That's going to cap off the sample line where it was previously connected to the well switch. Um, I used a quarter inch copper tubing to repair it before, but I'm actually going to move the line further away from the pump so it stops uh, just opening on the low water cutoff as soon as the pump starts. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove this hose bib uh, from the bottom of the well tank. It's a one inch hose bib connected into that fitting there. So we should be able to unscrew the valve now. And then the rest of the water will come out. All right, now we'll just use this wire brush to clean out the inside. Get any extra Teflon tape or pipe to plug out the side. Alright, next I want to connect this 3 quarters inch uh, male shark bite fitting MPT plug down into this. I could use a 1 inch one, but I'd have to also remove this fitting and 3 quarters inch is cheaper. I want to wrap it in Teflon tape and we'll screw it in. So key with Teflon tape, you're going to want to do it in the direction that you're going to screw it in. Or counter to the way you're going to screw it in that way. As the fitting gets tighter, it doesn't. It's going to finish screwing this in. Next we're going to use this 3 quarters inch to 1 half inch uh, shark bite reducing coupling. You can see there that's about the depth you want the piping. It's one. It's about 1 and a quarter inch. So I'm going to measure it out on this piece of PEX and then I'm going to insert it in the tubing on uh, both ends so the connector down in the uh, pressure um, or the booster pump area. And then uh, that I just connected, and then also to this three quarter inch coupling. Okay, so I connected the three quarter inch to a one half inch reducer to this PEX piping. My line's not straight, and I drew it a little too uh, long, but it's definitely all the way in uh, to this connection here. Um, this end's gonna go into the uh, well expansion tank uh, side. I'm guessing that line's a little too long too. And then I wanna connect this to a half inch pipe and then I'm going to connect that to this uh, T with a quarter inch. I'll put a um, another half inch pipe in a cap for future projects. We're putting another hose bib back on and then we'll connect the quarter inch pipe uh, back up to the sensing line on the pressure switch. I got the three quarter inch PEX to a three quarter to one half inch reducer to a one half inch to one half inch T with a quarter inch compression uh, fitting in a valve and then a half inch um, terminated with a cap. Probably add a uh, hose bib on the end of that. What I'm going to do is connect this up to the 
three quarter inch T we put down there, or three quarter inch um, connection down there, and then a quarter inch line. I'm going to run it with this copper tubing up to the pressure switch, and then we'll turn it on and see if it works. All right, next we'll add a little bit of Teflon tape to that connector. I've added a new layer of Teflon tape to the pressure switch. Okay, we're fitting out the pressure line. I'm adding a little more than I'm going to need because I can always bend it out of the way. Then a little extra uh, length of this will only get it a little bit further from the pump, which means that uh, hopefully the pressure transient won't affect the switch as much. Uh, then I'm going to use this copper cutter to cut it off and put it in the end there. So now I'm going to put this compression fitting back on. There's a little divot. Mm -hmm. So this washer goes here, and then this will go with the little washer facing down, and then we'll put that on the end of the pipe, right here. Okay, so now we got the quarter inch compression fitting connected to the quarter inch copper line, so there's a little ferrule nut that goes over the end of the copper, and then it just gets uh, held and retained by that little nut, and then it comes up to the pressure switch, and it's held back in there with the same end cap um, size that goes over here, 3 8 inch uh, inner diameter, and then goes up into the pressure switch, so now we'll turn it on and see if it works. Uh, so I'm actually connected to city water, but I live up on a hill, so it's only about 20 pounds coming in from the city. So I have this booster pump, similar to a shallow water well pump. Um, I have this valve open now, so it's going back to city water. I'm going to check my work here, make sure nothing's leaking. Uh, you can see I got about 10 pounds built up from the city, so not very much. And then uh, this valve comes in out of the discharge of the pump down into the pressure tank, which said at 38 pounds, 38 pounds for um, uh, boosting the pump up. The on pressure switch uh, comes on at 40, 40 um, pounds and then turns off at 60 pounds, 60 pounds. Uh, so it's connected up to our system here. It's not leaking so far uh, from any of the other mesh joints. I'll open this to make sure it's not leaking. Okay, so we got longer column of line going up and it doesn't feel like it's leaking so that's good uh, so it looks like our work is going well the next thing we're going to do is plug the uh, pump back in and reset the lever uh, this is a uh, Square D well switch with a low water cutoff. Um, the last digits are M4 of the thing that's saying it has a low water cutoff, but I'll take it to auto and then hold it up to start, and then it should start boosting up the pressure. All right, so we got uh, 15 pounds from the city. Uh, the pump is plugged back in, and then I'm gonna take it back to off and then on, and we'll see if the pressure builds up. All right, so then it shuts off at about 60. We'll check our work again with uh, full system pressure on there. Uh, doesn't look like it's leaking, at least right now, which is good. And down there, it's already all wet, but uh, it's all right. So, seems like it works. Now I'll try to run two things at the same time up in the house and see if the switch 
turns off or not. And the last place to show that it's not leaking from is this uh, connection. Uh, that was the cap that we put on. So 3 8 inch outer diameter um, FIP cap. Alright, so the last thing to do now is plug uh, or turn this uh, valve on, which will go up to the house. And it uh, should be good. So again, city water coming in. That could be your well uh, going up into the intake suction um, for the impeller of this shallow water jet pump uh, outlet showing about 60 pounds coming out and down into the well pump or sorry the uh, well pressure tank and then our new PEC setup so again a three quarter inch um, MPT connector into a uh, three quarter inch PEX pipe, half inch reducer, half inch T. I uh, wish they didn't have something in chrono, but that's what they got. And then an end cap, I'll put a valve on there eventually. And then quarter inch copper tubing up into the pressure switch. And then from there, comes back up, oh, up into the house. All right, so I got the washer on upstairs. It just finished filling, but we got a hose on full blast and we got a tub running in the upstairs. So it's almost at the trip on set point. We'll see what happens here. All right, so you saw it drop down to about 20 pounds of this is city water pressure uh, right when the pump kicked on. Uh, which is kind of what it was doing before, but uh, when it was previously connected to the pump itself, and by it, I mean the sensing line was previously connected to the pump, uh, the low water cutoff would immediately kick in, and I'd have to come down here and reset the switch, the pressure switch, using that metal lever. Uh, now it's at least not doing that, so I'm gonna give it about a day, uh, see if I have to keep coming down here or not, and then uh, we'll go from there. Right, for the hose bib connection, went with a three quarter inch um, MNPT connector uh, to the half inch shark bite connection. So I'll connect this up and then uh, I'll have a hose bib down here in case I need to drain any water. And then um, I actually bought a new well pressure switch to see if that actually corrects that problem where it's dropping down to like 20 pounds before it kicks on. All right, uh, so I just finished up this project. I'm gonna have to stabilize that um, bunch of connections down there just so it doesn't twist when I turn the hose bib on. So I got it resting on that blue cup for the time being. Anyways, uh, right now I have a hose on, the tub is on. Um, so a couple of different pretty big loads on the house that are way up the hill. And I got a new pressure switch. <laughs> You can see now that it kicks on at around 42 pounds. There's a 46 feet pressure switch with a low water cutoff uh, that I just replaced. And I think the other pressure switch might have been faulty because, um, you know, after replacing this one, it doesn't, it doesn't do the thing where it drops all the way down to like 20 pounds and then back up to 60. Uh, not sure why it was doing that. Uh, one thing I did do differently this time was that I kind of primed this line. Uh, so I filled it up with water. And the way I did that, like I said, I already have like 20 pounds of water pressure coming through. So I don't normally have to prime this pump, but you might have to with a well. Um, I should kick off here. In a second. There you go, so off at 60. Uh, there's the new pressure switch. Looks exactly like the other one, um, except it looks a little better. I don't know, maybe they put an old pressure switch on here. Like I said, glass plumber, don't recommend. Anyways, um, so yeah, I primed this by just uh, running some water. I opened the valve before I connected it up to there to let the water overflow out of the top. And then I, I uh, screwed it in there. So I did put um, tap-on tape on both ends of that that go into here. This is like a, uh, just the fitting that connects into there. Um, 
It's interesting, there's no real videos or anything that show you how to connect one of these plumbing wise. So hopefully this helps some of you guys. And then yeah, I got a, um, that three quarter inch, uh, well it's a half inch PEX to a three quarter inch uh, MPT connection into the female connection of this hose bib, uh, three quarter inch. And that's a hose, so. Anyways, working as designed. Hope you guys like the video.